Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kerbigato. Welcome to today. It is Friday, November the 2nd. Welcome to today. We are eagerly in the month of November, the month of celebrating Thanksgiving here in the United States of America. As you join on here, saints of God, you be expectant, be hopeful, be ready, be waiting for what Holy Spirit has for us. Amen. God is such an awesome God. He's going to do Ephesians 3.20 exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can think or imagine, according to the power of His purpose and operation inside of us. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So as you come on here, I'm going to get ready and Holy Spirit is going to bring a word of encouragement. I actually got tied up just a little bit, but God wants to bring a word of encouragement to encourage you, to strengthen you so you can be strengthened in the power of the word. I see Susan on here. God bless you, Susan. Thank you for joining in. So good to see you, sister. God is going to do an awesome thing for us today in Jesus' name. Hey, saints of God, thank you for joining in. Hey, Sherry Stedham, God bless you. Sister. Thank you for being here. We are going to end this week, Friday. We're going to end it in such an awesome way and an awesome, awesome blessing of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Sherry Stedham. God bless you. So good to see the others that are joining in. <clears throat> I see Sylvia. Kelly, hey Kelly, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Awesome to have you on here. We're going to end this Friday. Hey Dina, good to see you. Happy birthday to Joe from Rich and I. God bless you both. Hey Kathy Forbes, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. We're going to enter into the God's Word <clears throat> and His praise in Jesus' name. Hey Carissa, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey Diane, so good to see you. Thank you, Sylvia. Hey Kelly Taylor, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Sandy, thank you for being here, sister. Hey, Mike and Nan, you've been on my heart, Nan. I've been thinking about you, sister. God bless you. So good to see you on here. Thank you, uh, Dina. Tell them we said have fun. Y'all have fun, Dina. Go enjoy it and celebrate in Jesus' name. Hey, Elizabeth, so good to have you on here. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. <clears throat> hey, Barbara Darby, God bless you, sister. Hey, Mary Holt, good to see you on here. God bless you. So awesome to have you. We are going to be ready and willing, amen, today, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, that you, God, have brought forth the sword of your word, and it, God, is the sword of the Spirit, that we are wielding it as you, Father God, lead us by the power and the anointing of your grace, as we hear what you are speaking, Father God, and we, Father God, bring forth the grace to cut the cords of the enemy, to also use the keys of the kingdom to bind up the powers of darkness, and God, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Cindy, I was getting a dry, one of those dry tickling things in my throat. I need to get some water. I need to liquefy my throat. Hallelujah. So as you come on here, saints of God, Holy Spirit wants to encourage you. Right now, there is such a shifting where God is bringing us into the place of promise where we are not weary and well-doing. Amen. As God has been pressing us forward, we have to comprehend this. And I'm going to keep echoing the same message as we are getting near the end of 2018 and we are entering into 2019 that God keeps emphasizing that 2019, it is really going to be the year of God's promises, God's harvest. Amen. Hey, Virginia, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so this is the time, saints of God, as we are in the midst of transition, all that can be shaken is being shaken. And the reason that we are in this place of shaking is first and foremost, God is moving us into His location. What does that mean? He is moving us into His hope and His promise. Jeremiah 29, 11-13. For I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts to prosper you, to give you a hope and a promise. And so right now, I keep hearing from the Lord, location, location, location. And how many times have we heard that either on a show, on a movie, or heard it in real estate when we're looking for a property. Location, location, location. Well, right now, Holy Spirit keeps emphasizing how our present trials, our tribulations, are actually moving us into the location that the Lord has for us. 
God is reckoning with the enemy right now of our soul. He's exposing the areas in which the attacks of the enemy have been at a level which we have been clueless to. We can see this actually as we look at it with our subconscious. Things that have been subconscious that have not been exposed to the light, to our conscious mind, where we have awareness of it. God in this hour is allowing that shaking in order that we can move into the place of promise and to the place that God has for us. Now, God's thoughts towards us are for what? A hope and a future. But as we also see God's hope and future for us, that word hope, generally in Hebrew, the word hope is the Hebrew word tikva, and it indicates a cord. It indicates hope, and it indicates being encouraged and stirred up by hope. And a great example is actually an umbilical cord. When we came forth into this earth, we were attached to our mother, and that is a good demonstration of Holy Spirit moving in strength through our person, providing us the strength that we needed as a child. That indication, that analogy, is where God is bringing us into this hour to where we are clinging to hope. And we see this especially in Ezekiel 37, verse 11. After the army stands up, after the dry bone stands up and they are a great army, in verse 10, they cry out and they further explain in verse 11 of Ezekiel 37, our hope has been cut off. And that word hope is tikva. And it indicates a cord being cut off. Now for those of you who have great understanding, and I get into it in great measure, in a fiction sense, but it really brings it alive in my new book, Clawing and Gnawing. Get it on Amazon. It's awesome. Clawing and Gnawing. And so, for those of you who know the Psalms well, especially when you look at Psalms 2, and you look at that Psalm, it's indicating that the cord of the Lord restrains the enemy. Now, we also see as well, all throughout Psalms, in different chapters, that the enemy has cords. And so when we look at these cords, let's look at it analogous to an umbilical cord. Because think about it again. When we came into this world and we were giving strength from our mother, it came through the what? Umbilical cord before we came out of the womb. And in that place of strength, we got all the nourishment that we had need of to what? To thrive and to grow and to strengthen and to increase until finally the day of delivery. Amen. That is the same way of what is going on right now. In the present shaking, which we're going to get into Haggai 2 in just a minute before we end today's broadcast. We're going to get into that shaking that God has us going through. The purpose of the shaking, especially for the saints of God, the remnant, is that God is causing us to know those things that are subconsciously oppressing us. What do I mean? I mean the things that we are clueless to. Remember that things can happen in our subconscious mind and these things that are in our subconscious mind, such as memories, this is where most strongholds are set up by the enemy. We are to take down, as we see in 2 Corinthians 12, everything that exalts itself against the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is a stronghold. And what is interesting, particularly that word in Greek, stronghold, in 2 Corinthians 12, actually it means a sick bed. It means to be in fear, and it means to be in want. And so when we see what the enemy is doing as a stronghold, he is trying to put us in a sick bed to be in fear and in want. And so this actually is what is hindering many of us from entering to God's promises. And God has it for us, for us to enter in, amen. And so this present assault, or can I say trial and tribulation that you're experiencing, is to bring that which is already a stronghold in your soul at a subconscious level, and to bring it to the knowledge of your mind so that you can come into agreement with God, hallelujah, that this stronghold needs to be brought down in Jesus' name. And so presently, this shaking is going on. 
And with this shaking, there is a shifting as well as a sifting. A shifting and a sifting. And I keep hearing location, location, location. Where God is moving us into His location. So let's specifically look at Haggai 2. And we're going to get some understanding as we look at these scriptures in Haggai that reference this shaking because you're going to see a cause and effect. Remember that God is a cause and effect God. That He speaks a thing and when He speaks it, what happens? He performs it. Holy Spirit watches over God's Word to perform it. Now remember the other day when I did the number 9 for Watchmen and talked about how the number 9 means Watchmen. What is interesting here is actually where God, I even wrote numbers when I did this many years ago. You'll see it backwards, 24, 9, and 2. 24, 9, and 2, and that 9 indicates Watchmen, and that 24 is indicative of Psalm 24, which is what? The King of Glory. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his heart to an idol, nor sworn by his lips anything false. For this generation, this generation who seeks God, seeks his face, unto this generation, he will reward them with what? Righteousness from the Lord God of their salvation. And that righteousness comes from the King of glory. And immediately scripture in Psalm 24 goes into it, who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, in battle. He is the king of glory. And so this part of this shifting is to bring us into the location of God's army that is standing up and has his hope. And I love specifically praying Zechariah 9 12. And I really enjoy how the Amplified puts it as the prison of God's hope. Because think about it. If you have to be in any prison, why not be in the prison of God's hope? Because His hope does not disappoint. Amen. And immediately in Zechariah 9, 12, after it talks about God's stronghold of hope, His prison of hope, immediately after that in Zechariah 9, 13, and we'll actually get into that scripture today, because Haggai 2, this indication, this shaking, also goes along with Zechariah 9. Even though Zechariah 9 is a prophetic word of the Messianic kingdom, and things to come. Remember that Zechariah and Haggai were in the same era and they were both encouraging the rebuilding of the temple because the people had stopped. Zerubbabel had stopped building the temple. The people had stopped building the temple because the attacks of the enemy were so horrendous. And because the attacks of the enemy were so horrendous, they just laid on a sick bed pretty much. Can I say? They just kind of gave up the fight. And so that indicates the stronghold of the enemy that they had to wake up from. And so Haggai comes to the people and he talks about them putting money in their pockets and there's holes in their pockets and they're busy building their house, but they're not building for God's kingdom. And so there's holes in their pockets, but that's to wake them up, to shake them up, not to their financial provision, but to God's provision that once this shaking happens, hallelujah, his provision will come into the hands of his house. And it will be to further the kingdom, amen. And so both with Zechariah and Haggai, we see that they're prophesying and they're encouraging, they're edifying Israel, they're, they're edifying God's people to rebuild the temple. But we're also going to look at the end of Zechariah 9 and we're going to liken it as Holy Spirit brings us understanding with Haggai 2 and the shaking. So let us look at this, saints of God, and let us get understanding, amen. So let's start in verse 7 of Haggai 2. I'm reading out the Amplified. And I will shake all nations, and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. Now before we go further, I'm going to read this again. And God is going to bring us more emphasis. Because remember, the Word of God is taught in what's called a chiastic structure. 
For those of y'all who have not heard me talk about a chiastic structure, it actually comes from the Greek letter chi, which is an X, like this. It's an X like this. It has three components. Number one, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to teach you. Number two, I'm going to teach you. Number three, I'm going to tell you what I just taught you. The entire Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, is a chiastic structure. The Old Testament, Genesis 1, is a chiastic structure with John 1 and 5. So when you look at Genesis 1 through 3, it is a chiastic structure, and it tells us what God is going to tell us. And then when we, by the time we get to John 1, 1 through 5, that is the third component where God tells us what He told us. And so when we look at Scripture, it is always a chiastic structure. And so I'm going to go back to the Scripture that I just read for this purpose, for God to keep telling you what He's going to teach you as He teaches you, and then He just tells you what He just taught you. Amen? And so as we look particularly at this time, and we see the emphasis right here, we have to put it on where the emphasis is. Have you ever heard the saying, do not major on the minors? Well, a lot of people look at this verse and they come to it and they see shaking of all nations. The desire and precious things of all nations shall come in and I will fill the house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. A lot of people emphasize the shaking. That is not the, that is not the major for verse 7 of Haggai 2. The major is, I will fill. Who is I? The Lord of hosts. So who is speaking? You have to understand the facet of God being used in the scripture of who is speaking in order to appreciate and comprehend Zechariah 9. When we get to the strong of hold, stronghold of hope, when we get to that, you've got to be able to grasp this and get some understanding. Amen. And so why is it important that this facet of God is being used for Haggai 2, 7? Why? Because the Lord of hosts is always, always, always about the message. And so when we see Psalm 24, Psalm 24 gives you a visible display about the inner working of the Lord of hosts with his messengers. And who are his messengers in Psalm 24? Those that have sinned the hill of the Lord, that have clean hands and a pure heart. So all through the beginning of the year, the main emphasis that was being tested and tried in you was whether or not you had clean hands and a pure heart. If you were going to speak evil about others, if you were going to backbite, if you were going to devour, all of these were issues in our heart that God was working out, removing from us, so that we could be ready for the shaking and what is about to come. Amen. Because when God gets ready to bless His people, He always brings a shaking. That should get you excited right now. And you should be just throwing your hands up in the air and going, Woo, hallelujah, I'm in the shaking in Jesus' name. Do it, God. Because you have to go through this process of the shaking in order to enter the promises. And so as God revealed to us all through the beginning of the year, especially up through September, those first nine months, it was like intense on the threshing floor where we were being threshed as in Micah 4, 12, and 13. On that threshing floor, and the enemy was using different people that were given over to pride, that were given over to self-righteousness, that were given over to the things of the enemy, unaware. And he was using them to come against us. But it was a test in order to say, Yes, you are, Sherry said. And this should be, this is for you, sister. And understand, says a God, this is coming out of my mouth as I hear it. I'm hearing it for the first time as I'm preaching this message. So understand that Holy Spirit is bringing you this message. This message is gold. And I can't wait to watch this message after it's over. I'm going to get excited. I want to be on the other end where you guys are. And I want to hear all that Holy Spirit is saying. Hallelujah. And so as we went through this first nine months of 2018, it was a massive shaking and it was going to see whether or not we would put our mouth against other people that had come against us with the attacks of the enemy. And it was a trying of our heart to see if we would have clean hands 
and a pure heart. That we'd not have blood on our hands, but we would have clean hands. We'd resist the enemy. We would not open up our mouth. We would not defame someone else, but we would resist the enemy, hallelujah, and he would flee. So that's what's happened the first nine months. And now as we are entering the end of 2018, now we are entering the Haggai 2 shaking. And this shaking is for those that are going in ascension on the heel of the Lord. Psalm 24. These are the people that seek God's face. Now remember when I told you actually the other day on Wednesday that Luke 12, 48, as we were learning about the watchmen, those whom are given much are required much. That word required is actually the Greek word zetio, and it means not just require, but are you ready? It means to worship. It means to inquire, and it means to seek for. So that actually indicates a worship. So what God's watchmen are going through in this shaking at the end of 2018 is seeking God more. Because you know why? He's about to answer you, and He's going to bring your breakthrough. Amen? So let's look specifically at Luke 28, and let's get some understanding. Amen, Shirley. You hang on, sister. Hey, Cynthia, God bless you. Listen to the Lord of hosts because you have to understand I've taught on the Lord of hosts and I teach on the Lord of hosts with actually the Spirit of the Lord. When I teach on the Spirit of the Lord, I also teach on the Lord of hosts with actually one of the books in the Watchmen series called Malachi 3, 1 through 4, God's Revival Fire, His Holy Firemen. So I actually teach on the Lord of Hosts specifically in great detail in that Watchmen book. But what you're going to see specifically with Watchmen of the Lord is they are going to have a relationship and fellowship of knowing God as the Lord of Hosts. And so when we always see the Lord of Hosts, you have to understand it is always, 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 say always, it is always about the message. It is always about the message. And so as we see the Lord of hosts here in Haggai 2, 7, we hear that God is about to make a transition in his house and that he is going to bring breakthrough in. And this is his message, the message of the Lord of hosts. And so the emphasis for Haggai is the Lord of hosts bringing breakthrough. Amen. So let's look at scripture again in verse 7, and let's get some understanding, amen. And I will shake all nations, and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house, with its successor to which Jesus came, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace and prosperity, says the Lord of what? Hosts. So in just three verses there, seven, eight, and nine. In those three verses, four times, four times count it, it has the Lord of of hosts, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. We can look at it in this aspect. God is saying, I will perform my work now. I will perform it now. I will perform it now. Because when the Lord of hosts shows up, it's about to be a suddenly. It's about to be a quick work. Every time you see the Spirit of the Lord, you see freedom. Every time you see the Lord of hosts, which is distinctive from the Spirit of the Lord, every time you see that facet of God, it means the message is coming violently and it's coming quickly. The King of Heaven suffers violence and the violent, hallelujah, take it by force. And that Greek word for us 
is beostus, and it actually means an energy, a forcer, is what the Greek says about beostus. And so when we look at Haggai 2, and four times, amen, Dean, I'm fired up too. It says the Lord of hosts, you can bank on this, hallelujah, take it to the bank. It's coming suddenly, 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 hallelujah. And this is where the remnant rises up. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Psalm 24. And let's get some understanding. And where did I get these numbers from? 24, 9 and 2, as you see it backwards. I got them from verse 10. Because it says, On the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius. When we see the number 2, the number 2 always represents a witness. It always represents a witness. Why? Because it's happening. There's a witness. You can see it. It's an action. Amen. And then we have the number 24, which represents again Psalm 24. And then we have the number 9. And remember, 9 specifically for this Watchmen series, as I've already d demonstrated through Scripture, 9 represents the Watchmen's anointing. So when we look at 24, 9, and 2 together, it is a witness of the Watchmen's anointing. Why? Because in the end of days, as Scripture said, there will be watchmen that will be giving out the supply that is needed to those in that age, right? And so here we see in Haggai that there is a transition and a transformation about to happen. And God is going to bring His watchmen. And those watchmen walk in a prophetic mantle. And He does nothing first without speaking to His prophets. And so those watchmen that walk in that prophetic anointing, he's bringing together. And it's much like Micah 2 verses 12 and 13, where he gathers his army and we're together and we're humming with a noise. We have an uproar. Hallelujah. And that uproar is what? We've been on the threshing floor for a season, but glory to God. Now we are a wild ox. And he's lifting us up off the threshing floor. And we have bronze hooves. And he's going to bring the enemy under our feet. And we are just going to dance on the enemy's head, hallelujah. And crush him in Jesus' name. Why? Because the Lord of hosts has spoken. And no longer can that stronghold stay hidden in our subconscious. Because glory to God, it's an alarm. It's a wake-up call. And what has once been hidden... What has once been something we've been clinging to is now exposed. And hallelujah, no longer can it exalt itself against the name of Jesus. But we, hallelujah, are rising up in the boldness and righteousness of Christ Jesus as we've ascended the hill of the Lord. And He, hallelujah, is going to what? Fill us with righteousness, as Scripture says in Psalm 24. As you look at voice, verses 4 and 5 specifically, those that have sinned the hill of the Lord, that have clean hands and a pure heart, that this generation is a generation that seeks Him. Unto this generation, unto those people, He will reward them with what? Joy of righteousness from the Lord God of their salvation. So what are they going to get an increase of? Righteousness. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? Boldness, authority, power, breakthrough. That what has been hidden and oppressing you is no longer able to prosper because of the shaking. Hallelujah. So let's look again as we look at Haggai 2, 7 through 9. And then we're going to go to Zechariah 9. And we're going to start in verse 12. Now let's look at Haggai 2, 7. And I will shake all nations and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house, with its successor to which Jesus came, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace and prosperity. Woo! Hallelujah. Says the Lord of hosts. And this is where we get understanding of 3 John 1, 2. That we prosper in life and in health. Hallelujah. As what? Our soul prospers. 
And so this whole process that we're seeing together in this shaking that you're in is about what location are you in? Because again, I keep hearing location, location, location. Now think about it, saints of God. You want to move in the location that you want to move in, right? If you had all the money in the world, and this is not about that. This is an, an analogy. You have to hear me before you judge this, amen? This is an analogy. So if you had all the money in the world, would you not move where you wanted to move? The location. Because it's all about the location. If you have all the money in the world, you would pick the house that you wanted in that location, right? Because you want the location. And so as we look at Haggai 2 and we look at Zechariah 9, what God is doing is He's moving us in His location. Hallelujah. And in moving us in His location, we are about to get breakthrough because we are positioned, hallelujah, for the rain. We are positioned for the latter rain, Joel 2, 23, Zechariah 10, 1. We are positioned for the torrential downpour. We are positioned for the promise. I'm just going to turn around on that. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand this, saints of God? So your difficulty, your trial might look like you're going under, but it's about location, location, location. And the location is for the prosperity of God to hit your family. To hit your home and to bring you into the place of promise. So now let's look at Zechariah 9. And let's start in verse 12. And this is where we're going to end today. And God is going to bring you encouragement. And He's going to edify you. Amen. Zechariah 9, 12. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. Even today, do I declare to you that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. Now, glory to God. I just want to turn around on that. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm turning around the other way. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand this, saints of God? Holy Spirit is encouraging us that we are entering a turnaround season, a season of breakthrough, and that He is going to restore double for our trouble, hallelujah, He is going to restore double for what we have been through in Jesus' name. So let's look at Zechariah 9, 12 again. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. For I have bent Judah for myself as my bow. And fill the bow with a frame as my arrow. And will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece. And will make you, Israel, like the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord will blow the trumpet and will go forth in the wind storms of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend and protect them, and they shall devour, and they shall tread on their fallen enemies, as with sling stones that have missed their aim. And they shall drink victory, and be noisy, turbulent, as from wine, and become full, like the bowls used to catch the sacrificial blood, like the corners of the sacrificial altar." And the Lord their God will save them on that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the precious jewels of his crown, lifted high over and shining glitteringly upon his land. For how great is God his goodness and how great is his beauty. How great he will make Israel's goodliness and Israel's beauty. Grain shall make the young men thrive, and fresh wines the maidens. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand, saints of God, that Israel thinks that she has lost it? 
How many of you have been to the point where you feel like you're mentally or emotionally going to lose it? Let me tell you what. I was at that point almost eight years ago. And when I got to that point, I was working full-time, 40 hours a week as a supervisor over other uh, social workers in mental health, outpatient, foster care, psychotherapy. I was also a taxi for our, our family 25 hours a week. And I was also doing ministry 20 hours a week. And I felt like I was about to have a nervous breakdown. And I pulled off the side of the road and I was about to have a nervous breakdown. And I called Rich and I said, I do not know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Check me into a psychiatric ward. Something's happening with me. And I said, I don't know what's happening. I can't handle it anymore. And God spoke to me and he said, Robin, I've lifted the grace and you have to move to a different location. You've got to move out of your job and you've got to move into ministry because that's what I have for you. And all of a sudden, we went into breakthrough that before that transition, before that shifting, hallelujah, God brought a shaking, and it was that shaking that exposed the stronghold of the enemy in my subconscious that said I could not be a minister because I had not seen that before. That said we could not do ministry because we had not seen ministers like us before. That said that we could not trust God because that is not what all other ministers do in many areas. They lean on a paycheck. They lean on a salary. And God said, no, Robin, I'm bringing you the mind of Christ. I'm bringing you the righteousness so that you can shift, hallelujah, from this place of what you have grown up in to take into the new season as you enter into my promise. And I come forth as the Lord of hosts to suddenly perform the work. Do you understand this, saints of God? It is that place where you feel like you're barely holding on. And God somehow supernaturally lifts you up and brings you into his stronghold of hope. And he is plugging his hope in you like a cord. As in Ezekiel 37 with those dry bones. When they stand up, they stand up a great army. But they say, our hope is cut off. What good is it to use us as your army when our hope is cut off? And God has the prophet Ezekiel prophesy, I will open your graves and I will bring you out and you will know that I am the Lord God of Israel because I will bring you out of your graves. And I tell you, saints of God, some of you are in a grave in this old season and you're crying out to God for a new season and you're wanting to see it come suddenly. And the Spirit of God is telling you your hope has been cut off but God is renewing you. Hallelujah. He is refreshing you. He is strengthening you. And he has pulled you into a stronghold of hope. And he is about to bring the message of the Lord of hosts. And it's going to make you mighty. It's going to make you a warrior. It's going to make you bold. And you're going to enter the promise. And you're going to be rewarded a double portion of what you had. Of your former prosperity. Hallelujah. And God, hallelujah, is going to bring you in to his promise in Jesus' name. So I declare over you that that hope that you have is the hope of God. Because God's hope does not disappoint. I declare to you every attack of the enemy, of hopelessness, of discouragement, I take authority over it. I command those lying serpents be lifted off in Jesus' name. I command heaviness, discouragement, be lifted off in Jesus' name. And I take the sword of God's word and cut those cords off of you of the enemy's attacks of hopelessness and command it to loose you and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. And I call in the strength of the message of the Lord of hosts as in Haggai 2, 7 that says that he will fill his house with splendor. And I declare over you, hallelujah, that you will see the anointing of God as we enter into a new season and into the harvest. 
And you will know where God is shifting you that you enter into the place of His promise and of His breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the place of promise to know the strength and the purpose to which He's called you. Woo! Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, saints, I see chains falling off of people's feet. I see fetters breaking in the name of Jesus. And God says that some of you felt like your soul had entered the iron. As in Psalm 105 with Joseph. And God says he is reaching for your soul and pulling it out of that iron of the old season. And he is breathing upon you the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh. Hope. And you will have that abundant life that God has promised you. That he has given you and your family. And your children's children, hallelujah, will have this abundant life in Jesus' name. And God is shutting the door to your old season. I see God shifting many of you. And he says it's not going to look like what you thought. God says trust the process and trust what he's doing. He is still on the throne and he is over your life. Your, your life is is in the Father's hands. And the Father is moving you to the location that He desires. And I just keep having this vision. And it's just like, this is us. And I just see the Father's hands. And it's just like God is just moving us. And He's changing our location. And I'm telling you, saints of God, that some of you might not understand it. Some of you might not like it. But I'm telling you, where this is going to take you, you're going to run and you're going to see the purpose later. God says He's going to bring a double portion of blessing on you. And you rest in the fact that the Lord of hosts has spoken it. And the Lord of hosts will perform it. So I pray blessings over you. That the Lord bless you. He keep you. He shine His face upon you. Be gracious to you. That the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. And that His mark, His name is already on your forehead. And that he bless you in Jesus' name. I declare mercy and truth are bound to your neck. Where you have favor and high stand with God and man. And that God is a wall of fire around about you. And the glory in the midst of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I love you. I'll see you Monday in Jesus' name.